Kevin Bowen from Colts.com is now joining us on the Menard Studio Hotline. Hey, Kevin, what's going on? Hey, guys, how are you? We're doing well. Let's, uh, we got a few minutes here. Want to get to kind of the latest that's going on uh, in and around the Colts camp and Colts facility. They're done up in Anderson, but training camp continues on. Uh, not the greatest start to the preseason. Again, what Jimmy and I were talking about, you, you know that the scores don't mean anything when it's all said and done. Uh, but maybe from a fan's perspective, maybe I'm just too involved. You'd like to see maybe a little bit of a better product out on the field. Uh, when it comes to your backups and whatnot, they lose to Philadelphia 36-10. to 10. Uh, Not a lot of positives to take from that game. Eight penalties for 102 yards. They gave up 412 total yards to Philadelphia. Uh, what kind of positives did did Coach Pagano, if any, take away from that game on Sunday? I think uh, from a starting standpoint, you got to look at kind of divide the game up from what you saw out of the first-team offense, first-team defense, and then break it down the rest of the game. I think Andrew Luck played 11 plays. I mean, for the most part, you move the ball pretty well from an offensive standpoint. The Kobe Fleener drop, he'll stall that first drive uh, when it looked like it was going to cross midfield. Could have got points out of that. Second drive, uh, obviously ended in three points. Andrew Luck exited kind of the middle part of that drive. So I think you're pleased with what you saw in the first team offense, considering, I mean, really, you're missing you know, four of your top five playmakers, I think, in Dante Moncrief, T.Y. Hilton, Frank Gore, and Boom Heron. From a defensive standpoint, you know, the tackling, I think, is priority one going in next week. You've got to improve your tackling. But then any time you play at Philadelphia, it's just such an outlier to me. It's like, you know, it's almost like a college football team getting ready for Navy in that wishbone, <laughs> wing tee. It's just such a contrasting style versus what everybody else in college football runs yeah. from a Navy standpoint. And then the NFL, when you aren't game planning for week one of the preseason, it's, you know, can you truly evaluate your defense? when you're going up against a scheme that's so predicated on you to being on the same page and, and you know, reading what Philadelphia is doing from their keys and stuff. So tackling, ball security, I think those are the two biggest keys that Chuck Donald wants to work on. And then from a positive standpoint, I think you like what you saw in a couple of the rookies. Josh Robinson and David Perry, I think, showed a little in the second half to be guys that you can maybe count on down the road. Kevin Bowen, Colts.com, joining us on the Menard Studio Hotline. It's Ford and O'Brien, ESPN Evansville, 105.3 and online, ESPNEvansville.com. You mentioned Kobe Fleener, uh, and and you followed it with the word dropped pass. Uh, that's two words, actually. But, you know, there's a lot of talk about getting uh, Andrew Luck re-signed after this season's all said and done, getting him locked in long-term. T.Y. Hilton got his deal. But they're going to have to deal with a few other guys, too. Kobe Fleener and Dwayne Allen being two of them. Is this a year for Kobe Fleener, who's a very talented tight end, um, but has had his issues with drop passes. Is this kind of a make it or break it year for Kobe, in your opinion? I think this is a big year for both those tight ends, and one has really got to emerge from Kobe Flinner. Obviously, catching the ball consistently is a big year for him going into a contract year, but then you look at the last two years and you look at the stats at the end of the year. In 2013, Kobe Flinner was your second leading receiver. You lost Reggie Wayne to the torn ACL, and you know besides T.Y. Hilton, it was Fleener. That was your consistent threat, really, which is kind of a surprise. But again, when you didn't get much production out of Darius Hayward Bay, mm-hmm. you really didn't have much out of that second receiver once Reggie Wayne went down in 2013. And then you look at last year. Akeem Nick struggled. Dante Moncrief didn't really emerge till late in the year. Again, when Reggie Wayne got hurt, you, that second wideout was Kobe Fleener. You look at Dwayne Allen, and he's just battling injuries. So for going into this contract year for both of them, and and, and if you were the Colts right now, would you go with Fleener, a guy that's been more of a 16-game season guy ever since his rookie year, or would you go with Allen, who gives you a little bit more versatility, but then you got to factor in the injury situation. So these two guys are uh, two guys that I think realize that. I think it's going to be difficult for the Colts to keep both of them. Um, So this is an important year, but at the same time, I do think there's going to be some chances there for them, for them to make some plays because you got to think all the attention is going to go to T.Y. Hilton and those other wideouts that should allow for some favorable matchups for Fleener and Allen, two guys that both caught eight touchdowns last year. Well, on the defensive side of the ball, the Colts have uh, – Colts and defense usually aren't two words you use in the same sentence when you're talking <laughs> well. Uh, you know, but they win games. They, they, But that is a lot of pressure on the offense. Is this season – especially when they go and take a wide receiver in that first-round pick, which I still have some people scratching their head. But is, is this from that first preseason game, defense did not stand out. You said, you know, you're right. Philadelphia runs different schemes, and they're, they're just a totally different team to look at. But it's only one game into the preseason. But do you feel – you cover this team. You see them day in and day out. Do you feel this defense is getting better? Or as Colts fans – 
do we have to hope that they are able to score 35 at least every game? I think the defense is getting better. Is it going to be to the point where it's a top five unit? Probably not. And the offense is always going to get the headlines, especially when you have as much talent when you do on that offensive side of the ball. So I think for the defense, the biggest thing is just be consistent and not have these lapses or lulls that we've seen in past seasons to where last year, you know, against Cincinnati, you, know, you forced, I think it was like eight or nine straight three and outs. And then later on in the season, you have, or the next week, I believe, against Pittsburgh, you let Ben Roethlisberger go for a career high. So I think it's the consistency that really is something that Jim Mercer has been preaching in the offseason. I do think this defense has gotten better, and I think a big reason why is that it's a lot of continuity. Last year, you had no idea who that starting safety duo was going to be, really, until about this time, about mid-August, is when Mike Adams began to emerge and LaRon Landry was next to him. Now you have Mike Adams and Dwight Lowry. They've worked together the entire offseason. That cohesion, I think, is something that's vital for a safety duo. You have an experienced secondary. If you can get Robert Mathis to anywhere near the level that he was in 2013, or even you know, 80% of that, you should have you know, a premier pass rusher from the individual standpoint. So a healthy Arthur Jones and those other things that I mentioned, I do think this defense has gotten better. But again, it's never going to receive the headlines that the offense does. And I do think this offense is going to consistently put up 28, 31 points a game. So you don't need much out of your defense, but you've got to have them play better when you play those elite quarterbacks. And that comes in mid-October when you, you, when you start that run of Brady, Manning, Breeze, Cam Newton, I think all in there in love, about a five-game stretch. So uh, that's going to be the key stretch for me is what does this defense do playing those elite quarterbacks. Kevin Bowen, Colts.com, our guest, for O'Brien, ESPN, Evansville, 105.3. Kevin, one more for you. you got about a, uh, we got about a minute, minute and a half or so. Uh, DeJon Smith, rookie, uh, third-round pick this year, goes out with a concussion uh, during Sunday's game uh, against Philadelphia. What's the latest on him? Where does he stand? Yeah, he, he did not practice today. Like you said, he went out after eight snaps against the Eagles, and I, I really thought it was a big game for him because you know he hasn't really flashed in training camp. And it's been a baptism by fire, if you will, I think, for him, going up against all those, you know, elite receivers. So he did not practice. He's under the protocol. Um, you know, that can be – he could be back tomorrow or he could be back in a couple weeks. I think mm-hmm. that thing is just so fluid with concussion. And the good news from a health standpoint is that's really the only major worry heading into week two of the preseason is, is Robert Mathis, Donald Thomas still on pup, Nate Irving a little bit and Vic Ballard, but besides that, you haven't really suffered any major injuries, whereas this time last year you had already lost Ballard for the year, already lost Thomas for the year, and Colin Holmes got hurt in the preseason opener and had missed, you know, a, didn't, didn't enter the starting lineup again until week, week, of, week 16 against Dallas. So you are pretty healthy heading into these two scrimmages w- w- with the Bears and then the preseason home opener on Saturday. Kevin Bowen, Colts.com. Find him on Twitter. K Bowen Colts is where you'll get him there. Give him a follow to keep up on everything Indianapolis Colts. Great stuff as always, Kevin. We'll talk again next week. Sounds good, guys.